Uh, good evening, uh, sisters and brothers. Uh, the title of uh, my remarks is uh, uh, Has the, the Trayvon Martin struggle opened up an Arab Spring for black and brown youth? Uh, I actually didn't think of that myself. Somebody else did. I'll, I'll get to that later. Um, what we're concerned with here, to some extent, is why some outrages somehow garner more of a mass reaction than others. We all know that black and brown young people are either brutalized or murdered on a daily basis. Most of the time, it doesn't even get a little notice in the newspaper. And it's a, it's a hard thing to figure. It's not really a science. Sometimes there's just no way of analyzing it. You know, I think back to the horror of Katrina six or seven years ago and how many very serious revolutionary black activists hoped and expected there would be a rebellion. And there was a mass response. There were demonstrations. There were delegations. There were protests. There were congressional hearings. But it never quite, it never quite measured up to what all of us thought it deserved, this enormous violent attack by the government by virtue of <laughs> violent negligence, racist negligence. And I was thinking back to the, the lynching of James Byrd. That's not so long ago, 12 or 13 years ago. A more vile act is hardly imaginable. For those of you who don't remember, this was the black man who was dragged to his death. The Ku Klux Klan tied him to a pickup in Texas and dragged him to his death. He, he, he was beheaded. I think it was 2000, uh, maybe 09 or 88, something like that. Uh, the, uh, one, of the, one of the Klansmen was executed about a year or two ago, I think, you know. And of course, Rodney King and LA exploded. We had a pretty good demo in New York. If you remember, they closed down Times Square. But, and there was a reaction, but it, 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 and then there's Oscar Grant murdered in the BART station in Oakland. And of course, Sean Bell. And that struggle went on for many months and with many big demonstrations. And it was national, but in terms of activism, it was primarily local. I'm just going over these well-known outrages. Uh, and, and, and comparing the response to that crime and, and this tremendous response that the murder of Trayvon has received, where you have students walking out, mostly, I think, in Florida, for sure, but beyond Florida, all the way to Southern California, <laughs> Southern Florida, but Southern California, uh, California. And demonstrations, not only in Sanford, Florida, which rarely has demonstrations. You know that these have been the biggest demonstrations in the history of that relatively small town. But big demonstrations here in New York, a million hoodie on March 21st. Baltimore, thousands of Young black and brown people taking over City Hall. It seemed revolutionary. Atlanta, Detroit, LA, thousands of people, thousands of miles away from Sanford have been mobilizing. Congregations wearing the hoodie. <laughs> you know, middle aged, respectable people who half the time more afraid of people with hoodies because you know how that is but all of us they, they see it as a sign of you know uh, something they want to identify themselves with uh, professional teams <laughs> coming out on the field wearing hoodies 
uh, somebody who some of us have been waiting for him to do something progressive for a long time to live up to his uh, you know, his history as being a member of the Black Panther Party in Chicago, that's, you know, Representative Bobby Rush from Chicago, and that was the high point of his history, because he, since he's been in Congress, he's done very little of note, you know, but even he is moved to come out, you know, uh, you know, on the floor of Congress and don a hoodie and, and put on shades and be carried off by some racists. What is it? What accounts for this unusual response to this particular outrage? Maybe it is simply the fact that there was no arrest. That's got to be a big part of it. Everybody's asking, even the bourgeoisie, uh, they're, they're talking heads. If they would have just arrested Zimmerman, no arrest, it, it, it's inconceivable, it's inexplicable. Maybe that was the final draw, straw, so to speak. Maybe it's because what happened to Trayvon is so familiar to millions upon millions of black and brown people, perhaps mostly young people, but frankly black and brown people of any generation. There's not a dark-skinned person in this country that has been old enough to walk out of their home alone that hasn't been profiled. They're lucky if it's not a profile that you might not survive, like being stopped by the highway police, you know, or uh, by a cop or some vigilante somewhere. You're lucky if it's one of the less lethal, but, uh, all, but just the same humiliating forms of profiling, like somebody following you around in a store, constantly asking, can they help you, you know? Or somebody asking you, are you lost because you have wandered into the wrong neighborhood that you're not supposed to be there, you know. All of us have encountered that, and, and, and that, that's got to be a big part of it. But is there something deeper? This is where the Arab Spring, this is where the Arab Spring uh, analogy comes in. Uh, I, I, I thought it was uh, Tavis Smiley who, who, who mentioned that I was wrong. Actually, it was a, a, a young African-American journalist, very popular up-and-coming journalist, who uh, is the chief editor of a news website called uh, Politico, Political 370, uh, 365. Her name is Crystal High. And uh, she's very articulate, and because of that, she's invited to uh, be on the panels on MSNBC and CNN. So on a panel on CNN discussing this case, she said, Trayvon is our Arab Spring. What did she mean? Before going into that, before exploring that, I want to bring us back to what's most at issue right now in this case over the next few days as we're approaching April 10th where as you know there's going to be a massive national day of protests demanding justice for Trayvon we're very much involved in it actually it's starting before April 10th there are groups who are going to begin demonstrating in April 9th there are two days of demonstrations in Union Square one is on Monday, and it continues on, on, uh, uh, on Tuesday. We have more of an organizational responsibility for Tuesday's demonstration, but we have to be there also on Monday. I think the family actually is going to be there. But the issue now is, is the grand jury going to convene? Is it not? If they're not going to convene and press charges and have Zimmerman arrested? Is the so-called special prosecutor that's been appointed, are they going to do something? Is Holder going to do something? I think he said that he couldn't do anything, if I'm not mistaken. 